What's up, Lucky Gamers? It's Lucky Lux. Uh, today, I want to talk about something that is getting a little concerning being as a content creator for the game, and it, um, and I really want to clear the air with this. Uh, we're going to talk about portraits. Um, I think a lot of people are creating a kind of FOMO for a lot of people, whereas, like, if you don't get P2, if you don't get portraits on these characters, they just can't be used. Because especially with the upcoming characters and even the characters here at 1.2, a lot of people are like, oh, if you don't get P2, your account is gonna suffer right whereas that's not the case um characters work perfectly fine at p0 you can argue me down all you want but as long as you have a team built well you can beat everything in this game at p0 i'm not saying that oh if you don't have a six star you won't beat the content there is obviously content that is made for these characters. I'm not going to be oblivious to that, right? Like, I, I I, love this game, but I also know that there is content that is made specifically for certain characters, right? Like, you can't ignore, like, you can be a fan of a game, but you just can't ignore some of those things. But to say that a character needs copies in order for them to be viable is a whole different story, right? So... Uh, I'm going to use my global and my CN account. We're going to use a little bit of Predwin to kind of talk about this. Um, and kind of, again, clear the air because I, I don't like giving other players anxiety thinking like, oh, is just getting the character not good enough, right? Now you're like, dang it. Now I have to use like 100 to 150 summons to get P2 possibly or even more if you get unlucky, right? That's a lot of summons, whereas you could just get the character, right? Like it's already a struggle of like getting gems and everything like that if you're free to play. And now it's like people are creating like all of this uh, extra stuff. So let's go ahead and all right. So let's look at Melania, right? So Melania is a character, Sorry. one of the first Your characters plan, uh, that feeling a bit came out and people were like, all right, got to get P2 if she's going to be viable that's not the case right um p0 melania works just fine i uh i know i'm a spender but i'm like i'm a dolphin on my uh global account right the only characters that uh i'm going after like maxing out is poison right I, i'm putting these disclaimers out so people know so p5 so is just here uh, because I just want to maximize Poison Team because that's like a personal preference, right? But like all my other characters are P0. I got Eternity on while pulling for Sotheby and then I got her on my beginner banner. That's the only reason why she's P1, right? Uh, so, Melania, and there's no hidden portraits here. You? I'm not late. So she's P0. At P0, she's just, she's perfectly fine. Of course, with portraits, she gets stronger with her ult and having her, uh, Thief Master, being able to cycle it, being able to get uh, Moxie a little faster, right? So instead of like possibly ulting like, I don't know, like every other turn or every turn, you end up ulting every two turns with Melania, right? That doesn't make the character less viable in any way. Uh, you're, yes, adding 75% uh, extra damage to the ult. That doesn't make the character any less viable. It's just that if you like the character, right, the portraits make them better. If you love the character, the portraits make the character more enjoyable for you. But if you got the character, like myself, where you're just like, oh, it's a decent character, but she's not my favorite, and you just got her for the meta, P0 is perfectly fine. Like, there's no reason for even myself to tell people, like, oh, bro, like, if you're going to get her, like, it's either P2 or you out of here. Like, no, that's not the case, right? She's probably fine. Even Pickles. Some people got uh, P2 on Pickles, which I personally think, like, if you're getting P2 on Pickles, you kind of wasted um, a couple of pulls uh, because I would have never suggested P2 Pickles. Like, yes, you get the 10% extra damage dealt, but, bro, there's so, like... There's so many ways I feel like that 10% that extra damage, those pulls could have went to like another character, could have went to 
um, another thing. And again, if you're a dolphin, a whale, a spender, and you're like, I want to get the most recommended portraits for a character, I completely understand, right? Like, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people who are making it harder for players who are low spenders and free to plays, right? These recent videos I've been making, I've been really speaking to free to plays and low spenders because those are the people whom we have more of, right? There are more free to play players and light spenders than people who wail out and spend a bunch of money and get P2 or P5 on every single character, right? So I'm speaking to this group of people because like, you know, speaking to whales isn't necessarily the greatest video. Um, but anyways, E0, perfectly fine in pickles. Um, if, it, you know, if I were to be uh, gracious enough to have a tooth fairy, but I'm probably the only content creator who doesn't have tooth fairies and get lucky, right? Uh, I would also say with Tooth Fairy, right? Tooth Fairy is perfectly fine at P0. What P2 does is it allows her debuff to be 100% uptime. If you have her at P0, it's literally once every other turn. It's every other turn, right? That doesn't that doesn't make the character less viable. It just means that if you're going to play on auto, it's probably not going to be the best for you because you want to make sure that you maximize her debuff every other turn, right? So that's what it changes. It's from every turn to every other turn. Um, we're going to pull up uh, Fredwin here, right? And we're going to talk about these characters as well. So, um, especially now that it's coming to like 1.3, 1.4, even 1.5, a lot of these characters is like, okay, if I don't get portraits of these characters, it's a done deal. These characters are useless, all right? I'm gonna go through these characters. I know this video is probably a little cringe for some people. I don't care. Um, I want to get this out and clear the air about the portraits, right? So let's go down the list. We're gonna go through every single character that's coming out to 1.5 right now to kind of just clear the air for some people. So let's look at Shemaine, right? Let's look at these portraits. For this portraits, he uh, gets stacks of nature's blessing Gained by entering combat three, right? So what does Nature's Blessing do? After the caster uses their ult, consume all stacks of this to restore amount of mox equal to the uh, number of stacks consumed up to five, right? Upon entering combat, he gets two stacks of Nature's Blessing and start of every two turns, he gets one stack of Nature's Blessing. So upon entering combat, he gets two already from Insight one. And then, um, with uh, P1, he'll get three. So he'll start the fight with his ult, right? So instead of possibly you having to wait maybe till the next turn to use his ult, because you know, you're gonna use the skill to gain some moxie, now you can ult first turn, right? Uh, that's what it's meaning. And on the second one, it's changing his ult to the crit rate on the primary target is increased by 60%. Uh, the ult uh, has crit rate on it where the primary target is 20%. So you get 40% extra crit rate. Um, and remember, excess crit rate is converted to crit damage, right? Nothing about these portraits means I have to get P2. And I'm going to explain why. First off, if you summon Shemaine as a debuffer, right his portraits don't like his portraits don't really make him a better debuffer what this makes him is a better support that can be sub dps and ulting all day right that's what this allows is to uh allow him to ult first turn to where now you're gaining moxie and you're probably gonna ult the th like every other turn right you're gonna be constantly ulting with him does that make the character less viable that you can't ult first turn no it just means that the difference between a p2 and a p0 is one person's ulting first turn with a little bit more uh with a little bit more uh consistent crit rate and the other person isn't that's all it is guys right and you already have your tooth fairies to help give crit so that means when you do ult you'll have you know, everything set up, you have all your debuffs set up, have everything set up, so that way that second or third turn that you're ulting with Shemaine, like, you're hitting. That's 
that, that's all this is changing, right? All right, let's look at Black Dwarf. Now, Black Dwarf is a character that I know a lot of people can argue. They're like, oh, but what about her stacks? But what about um, her full moon and everything like that? The character doesn't work at P0. Yes, she does. What the P1 and P2 stacks do is it gives you a little bit more freedom with your planet stacks. It takes it from three to four, right? So that means you have um, the capability of getting up to four stacks of leech rate or four stacks of penetration rate, right? And then if you get P2, it gives you three stacks of full moon versus two. And then you get a little bit better of the spell empowerment, which is um six percent extra skill power so you go from having 12 percent to 18 percent um and then you will still get from your uh inside three the spell incantation and it gives you a little bit better of that so what that is doing is allowing you to get a little bit extra penetration rate a little bit extra leech rate and then uh having three stacks of skill power so you're getting six percent extra um, skill power. So all you're getting, like, really from P0 to P2, right? And I'm, I'm speaking in a simple term. You're getting 6% extra penetration rate or 6% extra leech rate or 6% extra full moon stacks, right? Um, now, getting the three stacks of full moon does give you an easier uh, chance of proccing the spell incantation which upgrades her spells. I will not argue that for Black Door. Black Door is one of the characters where the portraits are a little, a little like lean to the like um, stronger side for her because it allows her to do her kit way more effectively, right? Um, but it's still not required because you could just with the three stacks you have, you can stack up Mars, you can stack up Saturn and do a follow-up attack with the character and still get extra damage because the character does a follow-up attack after she ults when you have her in sight three, right? So it's still possible for the character to do a lot of single target damage or doing some extra damage with her um, mass attack. So it it's still not required. She's still gonna be a strong mineral character, right? 1.4, now 1.4 are the characters where um, pretty much people are saying, oh, these ones are required to have portraits. They're literally um, bad. And I'm going to make a separate character, I'm a, a separate video about these two because I think there's a lot of people who don't understand how they work. Anyways, uh, 37, um, first off, is a sub DPS. She's not a support. Stop saying she's a support uh, because you're having people, um, you're giving people wrong information. When it comes to, uh, she works like a Regulus in a way where she can be a sub DPS on a team, right? If you get more portraits and she gets stronger, that's that's all it is. It's not required. Everything in her kit can still happen. The only thing that she does is she can buff allies and give them a 10%, um, a 10% uh, buff that stacks up to two times. So it goes 20% then 10%, right? After that, she doesn't help her team in any other way, right? The sturdiness buff, she only applies it to herself. Uh, what the character does, she does Genesis damage. If she gets her Eureka stack, she's able to do a follow-up attack, right? Which is why I was saying that New Babel is a good character with her, even though people disagreed with me, but you know, hey, I have the character, um, the character, so. But anyways, um, and then at Insight 3, she's allowed to crit, right? So that's how the character works. She can crit Genesis damage, right? That That's the whole stick of the character. She crits Genesis damage pretty much. And she does a lot of crit, right? Her Insights uh, give her... Uh, so Insight 1 gives her an extra 20% crit because she gets 20% here and then she gets another 20% um, with the, the portrait. I'll admit the portrait is good, but it doesn't mean it's required. Especially if the character is a sub DPS, she's still going to crit, right? It might not be every time she attacks, but she's still going to crit. Especially since a lot of you got uh, Tooth Fairy, that can help her crit a lot, right? So you already have a character that can help her crit. So this portrait isn't necessary, but if you don't have Tooth Fairy or you're wanting her to just have overcap crit, 
Sure, you could like get this portrait, but she doesn't convert crit rate to crit damage. So there's no reason for her to have a gajillion uh, crit rate. Portrait two, what this does is it gives extra damage to the follow-up attack. So the follow-up attack goes from doing 120 and extra 40 to doing 180 and an extra 60, right? So you're adding extra damage to the follow-up attack. That doesn't mean it's required. And portrait three um, means that when she ults, she adds um, three stacks to Eureka and it just allows her to do her follow-up attack um, a little easier because now it's uh, now after you ult, you only need to get two more stacks to do your follow-up, right? It's all about allowing you to pretty much just do your follow-up attack a lot easier with her portraits, right? That's that's mainly what's going on here, is uh, making her uh, follow-up damage more. But you could totally get away with still using the character because the uh, ult gives you extra incantation damage, so you can get up to a hundred, so you can get, not up to, you can get an increased 100% extra incantation damage so now these two skills here are gonna hit um way harder you're pretty much doubling them and that happens at p0 and you still have the crit you saw the extra crit damage you saw the follow-up attack so the character is perfectly fine at p0 argue me down what you want she's a sub dps character that works like regulus she'll still hit very hard if you get portrayed she works better but she's still gonna be better um now this character is a little ridiculous that people say is required for portraits Six is a character that has support. He is a support. And he can give buffs and debuffs, right? The All the character wants to do is put stacks of debuffs on the enemies and stack of buffs on the enemies. You can make him more of a DPS if you get portraits because what these portraits do is they allow his ult to do more damage, right? Sure, this gives you extra purify there. And sure, this gives you... Um, this uh, P2 gives you uh, a little extra Eureka and a little extra damage, but all this does is makes him uh, an intellect DPS, right? You could consider him with Portrait as our first intellect DPS. At, but again, he still has an ult that does 1000 mental damage if you get the stacks fully. But if you're using these Eureka stacks to get the character. Um, to do more ult damage, then you're taking away from him being a better buffer because for him to give the um, empower incantation buff, you have to use the stacks to, uh, you have to use your Eureka stacks to apply that to your allies. And so you have to decide, do you wanna have a stronger ult or be a better buffer, right? That's pretty much the difference. So you can decide, to do I want this round six to be a DPS or do I want him to be a buffer? You can do that at P0. Portraits just make him a better uh, DPS in that and just have him a stronger ult. So it does. The portraits don't make him a better support. So if you're going to summon six as a support, keep him at P0. Mine is at P0. I just got him inside three. He does bust for free every round. And I they stack like crazy. Um, and then I'm applying buffs to the team. So I have like five or six buffs on uh, my team typically with uh, six, but that's all at P0. If I wanted his ult to hit for 80K or whatever like that, sure, I'll get the, the portraits, but it's it's not necessary, right? So that's what the character does. And now with the newest character in 1.5, right? And we can kind of close out this video. We have Spathodia. I have Spathodia, I tested her at P0 and I've tested her at P1, P2, and P3. The character is a character that is again a character that kind of wants to go every other turn. You want to use her buff before you attack because the the light uh, light cone because the psych cube that you give her gives her extra damage whenever you have the buff on yourself. So you always want to have the buff before you attack, right? And that's true from P0 to P3, right? The amount of burns that you apply do not change with the portraits. So getting up to 15 stacks to do the ultimate, uh, the extra ultimate damage doesn't change and getting the extra stacks to do uh, the, uh, getting extra burn stacks for this crit rate doesn't change. What the portraits change is they give her more damage, right? 
but it doesn't mean that the character can't be used at P0. So if you look here, Little Boxer gets 70% extra crit damage. So that's her uh, skill. It goes from 40% to 70%. Uh, Flame Flower's effect increases crit rate to 50%. So she goes from having 25% crit rate when she attacks a burning enemy to 50% crit rate, right? Now someone could say, well, like that means that you have to get her P2. Not exactly, right? So this is 25% crit rate the character has. The character with her portraits is up to get up uh, is able to get like up to like uh depending on how you better like 20 to 30 percent crit rate so now that's putting you at like around 50 right just just with attacking a burn enemy and having her an actual crit rate you're around uh 40 to 50 crit right when you use her skill if you buff up you get stacks of exhilaration exhilaration gives you 15 percent crit rate per stack. You get 30%, 45%, and 75% crit rate based off how you do it. But guess what? I showed this on stream. If you use the buff, right? You If you use the buff and you get this stack of crit rate, you could, you could technically just take another turn to buff again, and it will continue stacking, right? So what do I mean? Um, I showed it on stream and in a kind of... Uh, obnoxious way but like let's say i use the level two buff and i have now six stacks of free ignition and three stacks of acceleration i now can give apply six stacks of burn and i have uh 45 percent crit rate if i do a level one buff again i will now have nine stacks of free ignition and five stacks of exhilaration and so therefore i will have uh 75 percent crit rate which will go on top of the if i inflict a burn status the next attack will have 25 percent crit rate which will also go on top of the crit rate that i have in my uh or uh, not portraits but uh resonant uh resonance and it will also go along with if you're lowering the crit defense by using her with tooth fairy right so you will have so much crit rate that it's honestly too much to where i don't really think she has to have tooth fairy honestly but um, you'll have a crazy amount of crit rate. So then now you're gonna be critting all the time to where your little boxer will be able to hit and then you'll be able to get uh, the stacks of flame because especially if you're able to get more stacks of burn with this reignition, you can get up to 15 stacks of burn a lot easier. You just have to plan a little bit more. She's just more of a character that uh, you have to do more setup for, right? Which is not a problem, it's just that you know, if you get the portraits, you're just able to just crit more, like, effectively. You just have more crit to work with, right? Sorry, so trying to get over my sickness. So, to conclude this video of old man Lucky uh, just kind of ranting, the portraits are not required. What the portraits do is they allow the character to either be more fun or to be uh, stronger. But the characters work at P0. I know my comment section is going to be filled with people who are saying, Cap, L, take, creator doesn't know what he's talking about. Even though I've played with a lot of these characters, especially the characters that you guys say that have portraits that are a little crazy, like, I won't admit, like, I won't deny the fact that there is a portrait power creep, right? I've talked with, uh, I am Rivenitz, um, I've talked with Kaki Gacha, I've talked with Steam Bun. Portraits are power creeping in a way that the portraits for newer characters are way better than standard characters. I, I, I will agree to that, right? Again, I'm not going to ignore something that is there. But to say that the portraits are required is silly. So, again, guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know I kind of summarized every character from, like, that we pretty much have. It is a long rambling video, but I really wanted people to understand what's going on with these characters and to just relax because I don't want people freaking out with their pulls and thinking like, now I have to have like 200 pulls for this character if I want to have her. No, just get the character and enjoy the character. If you really love the character, get portraits, but it's totally up to you, right? Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. You lucky gamers, have a good one. Lucky Lux out.